want to tell the story about Brazil, the Brazilian flag kicking incident. So I've only been to Brazil one time with the WWE. We went to Sao Paulo, Brasil, and um, loved the country. It was kind of a weird story because we were supposed to get in the night before. There was a problem with the plane, so we were stuck kind of overnight. Um, I believe it was in Washington, D.C., whatever. So we flew into to Brasil and didn't get into Sao Paulo in probably until about, I think, 2 or 3 in the afternoon. Went and dropped off our stuff at the hotel. Or maybe we didn't even have a hotel. I don't remember. We might have just went straight to the venue. And um, it was our first show, I believe, ever that the WWE had ever had in, in Brazil. And it wasn't a great crowd, maybe half of a house. And the crowd was, you know, not super crazy, but they were kind of watching it and digging it and see, seeing what this WWE stuff was all about. Um, the Brazilian army were the security for the show. And these guys carry around guns. They're all standing there with rifles and, you know, some machine guns and all that other stuff. Stuff that you kind of see sometimes in some of the third world countries. I guess Brazil would be a third world country or close to it. So we were having the match. Uh, it was CM Punk and I in the main event working on top. People hanging from the rafters. Tell them who. It uh, wasn't exactly hanging from the rafters, but the people that were there were, were excited. We come to the ring. Uh, Punk gets introduced. He's the, he's the good guy. I'm the bad guy. And somebody throws a Brazilian flag into the ring. So Punk grabs it and kind of takes it and parades it around, waves the flag, people cheer, and he puts it on the turnbuckle. Referee Mike Chioda uh, goes to take the flag out of the ring, and I stop him. I go, no, 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 Mikey, come here. Let me have that flag. I pick the flag up. I wave it in the air. I drop it on the ground. I step on it. I kick it. it took about three seconds. And I was expecting to elicit this crazy riot uh, from the fans in attendance, didn't really do that. Got a little bit of a reaction, but it was nothing nothing special, nothing over the top, nothing extraordinary. Um, so I figured, well, okay, the crowd's kind of dead, whatever. So I start working the match, and Punk had just finished his shine, and I'm just starting to get the heat on him. I've gotten that done the heat spot, so he's selling for me. And I'm in the corner beating him down, and I see a guy behind me extra close. And I turn, and it's a referee, but it's not Kyoto. It's Charles Robinson. Charles had come into the ring. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, why is, why is Charles in here? Does somebody get hurt? Or, and he goes, you have to apologize. I'm like, what? He goes, you have to apologize for kicking the flag. I'm like, F that. Get out of here. He goes, I'm serious. I'm like, get out of here. Go away. And I look, and I see John Laurinaitis running down to the ring. And he's the, the producer of the match, you know, the agent of the show, the guy who's in charge of this road show. And he goes, seriously, Chris, you have to apologize. This is real. This is serious business. You have to apologize for kicking the flag or they're going to arrest you. I was like, oh, no, here we go. This is serious. So it's almost like Wayne's World. I, I, I take Punk in the corner. I'm like, you know, just sell. Just stay there. You know, car. Here comes the car. Stop the match. And um, I grab the microphone and I go and I say, hey, listen, um, I just want to say I apologize to anybody I offended tonight for kicking this flag. I did not do it maliciously. I did it as part of the show. I did it to entertain you. I would never uh, do something to insult or disrespect the fine people of Brazil. We love your country. We love your flag. And uh, I hope you can forgive me and I uh, hope you enjoy the show. And the people are kind of lightly clapping, but I almost got the sense they're like, what is this guy talking about? Like, just can we have a wrestling match, please? Can you get back to the show? So I go back in the corner and it's like, game on. And, you know, we have to start from scratch, build the match back up again. And we, we did. It was nothing special, though. The vibe had been lost. Punk beats me and then grabs the flag and runs around with it. You know, and that's what we wanted to do. Good guy grabs flag, puts it over. Bad guy insults it. Good guy wins in the end, grabs flag and runs around. And everybody's happy. You know, the, the new son of Brazil. So I walk back through the curtain and I go. And it's one of those things where no one's really looking at me. Everyone's kind of looking at the ground and looking the other way. And I see a couple of these soldiers on the other side. There's one gray-haired guy just staring me down, like just really bad. So I go over to Dean Malenko, who was another of the uh, producers of the show. And I'm like, what's going on, man? And he said, that guy over there, he's a colonel in the Brazilian army. And he, he thinks wrestling is real. He wanted to walk to the ring and arrest you on the spot when you kick the flag. Like, screw the match. Just wanted to come in and arrest you. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, so I would have been taken directly to a Brazilian jail wearing like brief underwear with sparkles on it, you know, like little small little tights with sparkles and rhinestones. Like, can you imagine being in the jail in the jungle with that? Like instant ladyboy, right? So I'm like, well, thankfully they didn't. And she said, yeah, we were able to talk him into just accepting an apology, but he hasn't accepted it. He's very mad at you. And, uh, 
you know, he wants, he still wants to arrest you. You know, we, we probably should get out of here sooner than later. And I'm like, should I go talk to the guy? They're like, no, just stay away from him. So I decided to text Vince. I'm like, hey, Vince, I just want you to let you know. I kicked a flag in Brazil. Um, Army's mad at me. I apologize in the ring. I think it's okay. Note to self, next time I come to Brazil, no more kicking of the flag. Vince texts me back a few minutes later. You know, you won't be going back to Brazil. You know, how could you do this? You idiot. Like, you know, how how long has it been since I've allowed that sort of wrestling bull? And I'm like, like you know, I kick flags all the time. It's just something that heels do. He goes, no, not on my watch. I said, that's an 80s bullshit. He goes, go home, Chris. You're suspended. We'll talk about this when you get back to the States. You're suspended. I'm like, what? Suspended? For what? And he's like, yeah, and, and on top of that, you know, we can't come back to Brazil anymore. You know, what the hell's going on? I'm trying to build this company. Why would you do that? You really screwed me over. So now I'm feeling, like, pretty angry myself, as if I wasn't angry enough already. And I go over to one of the market reps from, from the WWE. I said, hey, are we not allowed to come back to Brazil? And the guy said, what are you talking about? I said, are we not allowed to come back to Brazil? He goes, not that I know. I haven't heard that. I'm like, okay, so Vince is exaggerating. And... um I call him. I call Vince. I'm like, hey, like, what's going on? Why would you do this? He's like, I don't want to talk to him. I'm so angry at you. You know, it's 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 minor league bull that you've done. You know, you've kicked this flag, and now and now, you know, our whole relations are spoiled. You're suspended. Go back to the states, and we'll talk about how long it's going to be when you get back. And I was supposed to have a pay per view match against Randy Orton in like two weeks, and I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll just go for like a week. You know, a week suspension, two weeks suspension. I'll still be able to do the pay per view match, and everything's fine. So. They rush me out of the building. We get a police escort to the airport, and we're in the gate kind of waiting around to go. We finally start boarding the plane because what happened was the rest of the crew was going to Quito, Ecuador. I couldn't catch a flight from Brazil, plus they wanted me out of Brazil to the next uh, till the next day, and they wanted me out of Brazil. So they said, I'll take the charter with the rest of the group. We'll land in Quito. I'll fly out from Ecuador once again the next night. I'd wait a full basically 24 hours. So everyone's getting onto the plane, and I'm walking on the plane, and then this cop stops me and goes, hey, come with me. I go, oh, my gosh, like, what's going to happen? He takes me back out into the gate, and he goes, can I take a picture with you? I was like, yeah, I guess. So all the cops want to take a picture with Jericho, take a shot, get back on the plane. We start going on the runway, and then you know Vince is giving me updates. So then I go uh, on the website, or I get a text that, that it's up on the website now that Chris Jericho has been suspended indefinitely for denigrating the Brazilian flag. And I'm like, denigrating, that's such a Vince word. Like, he obviously wrote this press release and put it up online. I'm like, why did you put it up online? He's like, well, because people need to know about it. I'm like, they wouldn't have known about it. They, he goes, no, there's cell phones, and people would be filming it and be all over the internet. I'm like, yeah, but if you don't acknowledge it, then it's not a big deal. He goes, no, I have to acknowledge it. He goes, uh, you know, people need to know this, that if they, if we come into their country and insult them, that I'm, it's no tolerance. I will make sure that whoever the you know guilty party is is punished. And now I can kind of understand that. You know, he, he wants to protect his business. You know, and, and I had insulted the country and found out that kicking a flag in Brazil is a felony, which I wish someone would have told me yesterday before I kicked it. Obviously, never would have done that. Uh, my friend Andreas Kisser from from the Brazilian metal band Sepultura said that th their singer was put in jail once for kicking a Brazilian flag, and they're from Brazil, so what chance did I have? So Vince is still texting me back and forth, and he's like, oh, by the way, TMZ just picked it up. And I said, of course they did, because you put it up on your website. It's like you're becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. You want people to know about this, and, and they're finding out. It's like, it's not a self-fulfilling prophecy. And he goes, I'm like, you should have had my back on this. He goes, listen, I have your back. I want you to get out of Brazil don't give your passport to anybody. Get out of the country before they arrest you. I want to. I want to. I want to protect you through this. So we finally get on the plane. Wheels come up, and I'm like, I'm taking off. You know, thanks for caring. He's like, you know, I love you, you big dummy. And ACDC is still the the best band, is what he says, because <laughs> he loves ACDC. He knows I do too. So I land in Quito, Ecuador. You know, probably four or five in the morning. Go to sleep. Wake up at about noon. I got a bunch of texts on my phone that I was suspended from the WWE for thirty days. Once again, the, the WB.com website posted the news about my future before I even knew about it, and I was furious. And Vince texts me. He's like, are we having fun yet? Give me a call when you wake up. I'm like, screw that. I am not calling this guy. I'm like, no. You're going to put it up on the website twice and not tell me? And also, I find out now I'm suspended for 30 days? Like, what does that even mean? With pay, without pay? Like, what's going to happen? I'm so mad at him. I have to wait the whole day in Quito, Ecuador, like kind of the the the, the pariah you know like the ex exiled child you know the the, the 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 disgraced child with nowhere to go and the rest of the gang goes to the show and i gotta stay in the hotel